So I'm gonna share my screen in a second. And we can start with the agenda so everybody else can see it. Okay. Or does anybody else have it up they can share? I gave, um, let me give everybody co host. That is on the council. That. That Jada, you can be a co host too. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Share screen. Let's see. Sorry, everybody. Always uh, trying to work out the tech thing. Okay, there we go. Everybody's on there. So just... In the meantime, I will share our meeting norms in the chat. There we go. Um, so, um, since we have all of our council members here, I will share, um, that we are meeting via zoom. This meeting is being recorded. Um, audio and video are being recorded and will be available um, online after the meeting. And I will move to open the meeting. I'll second it. I'll third it. Great, all in favor. <laughs> our meeting is open. Oh, do we have a, um, great, our meeting is open. Do we have a note taker for today? I'm doing. A, I'm going to do live transcription. Okay. Um, and then Jesse is our clerk, and uh, I will share the transcription with Jesse, and it will also upload the meeting to YouTube uh, and have it uh, available on NorthamptonArtsCouncil.org. Um, just click on blog when you get there, and it will also be shared through the Northampton Open Media um, um, link as well. And they'll, they'll probably get it up in within a week, but we'll have it up on NorthamptonArtsCouncil.org and our YouTube as well, Northampton Arts Council's YouTube. Great. Thanks, Brian. So um, we'll open the meeting as we always do with opportunity for public comment. I just want to share for context that this is the first Arts Council meeting that we've had since December. Um, this group has come together a number of times uh, this summer to, to make decisions about grants, but this is our first business meeting, our first council meeting that we've had since December. So in that time, we have a lot of new members. Um, hopefully you've got a chance to look at the agenda for our meeting today. We're gonna talk about how the Arts Council works, how we function, we're gonna talk about scheduling, um, notifications, what, what the agendas mean, how they come to be, um, and we'll go through our group meeting norms. And then we have um, quite a few uh, actual like topics to discuss today, but this is really the first meeting that we're having as a, a council. So I wanna say welcome. We'll also do some introductions. Uh, I'll start just, my name is Danielle, I'm the chair of the council. Um, I use your pronouns and everyone will introduce themselves after we do um, public comment, but um, all of that good stuff is to come. But for now, um, I just wanna open up to public comment. Um, if you submitted comment for folks to read, we'll read it in line with, um, you know, the the agenda items that that we're going to use to discuss those topics. But if anyone would like to speak, feel free to raise your Zoom hand. Um, and Brian can unmute you, or you can unmute yourself. Okay. 
any one for public comment. Okay, so um, let's get, is it okay to get started with our agenda items now? And we should read uh, the email from Doris. Okay. Um, she wanted that to be public part of public comment. Part of public comment, not. Yeah. Great, so um, I can share that. Um, so, There were there were like two emails, so I just want to make sure I get the most recent one. Okay, so we received an email from Doris Madsen on September eleventh at. 9 p.m. Um, and she's requested that we read it for into public comment for this meeting and we will discuss it late. We can discuss it later, but just to read into public comment, this email says, to the Northampton Arts Council, it is most important that there be a recorded public discussion about the cancellation of last year's biennial. It was a grave disservice to the 60 artists and poets whose work could not be seen and read. I suggest that the Northampton Arts Council apologize to the entire group as well as the volunteers who are on the biennial organizing committee. Personally, I do not care if I individually receive that apology from you. Enough has been said and written and continues to be said to me personally to this day. I have heard enough from those who are concerned about what transpired. I do not need any apology directed at or to me. If NAC is willing to hold a public discussion, either in person or virtual, I am prepared to issue my apology to the indigenous community. Should you be unable to organize a community discussion, I will at some point in the future, create an opportunity whereby the community of those dissatisfied with what transpired can create a community apology to those artists. And at the same occasion, I can issue my apology to the indigenous community. It is a year since the situation blew up and far too long to leave it unresolved. Best Doris Madsen, best Doris and then Signature is Doris W. Madsen and her email address and phone number are listed there as well. So I believe that's all we have for public comment unless anyone on the call wants to raise their hand and speak. Okay. Great. Well, thanks everyone for being here today. Um, this, as I mentioned, this is our first meeting as a group. For As a group, it's our first meeting because there are so many new members. We hadn't had quorum in a long time. Um, and this is our first official council meeting since December. So welcome back, everyone. It's great to see so many familiar and new faces here. Um, I think it'd be great if we could just start off by going around the Zoom room. And if you are a council member or a potential council member, there are a few folks on this call that are um, waiting to be confirmed, um, but are hoping to join once the bureaucratic process that makes it possible to be on the Arts Council um, completes itself. Um, if you could share your name, um, pronouns if you want to, and what, you're excited about what what made you join the Arts Council, what brings you here, just so that we can all get on the same page. I think that would be a really nice way to start. So I'll, I'm Danielle, um, she, her pronouns. I joined the Arts Council a couple of years ago because I stumbled upon a public art fair that Brian had organized in downtown Northampton. And it was the kind of work that I did in my, my day job. And I was so excited to see that happening in the city of Northampton and wanted to be a part of supporting that and care really deeply about promoting um, access, equity, and inclusion, and inclusion in the arts. So that's the kind of lens that I bring to, to my you know, interest here on the board. And I'm gonna model, I'm gonna popcorn it to someone, unless Jada, you're raising your hand to go next. Um, so maybe once someone finishes, raise your hand if you're willing to go next, or if no one's hand is up, just popcorn it to someone else on the committee and we'll try to get everybody in. Okay, so Jada, you're up. 
Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Joella. They also call me Jada. And I have to tell you, I'm freaked out by thunder and childhood issues. But anyway, I'm glad to be here. I um, excited about the, the council and all that it does. And um, I just survived my first, uh, what was that grant thing? <laughs> I'm still of drama from that, but it was pretty exciting. And I just have to tell you, I was so excited reading and learning about all these groups. And um, it was it, it was exciting. It was excruciating, of course, but, uh, and I'm just hoping that I can figure out the um, uh, computer system to better notate my, my notes and um, markings, but I'm excited to see everybody. So that's it. And sorry, I'm having a little technical issue. So if you see me on or whatever, it's, uh, I'm here. Thank you. Does anyone want to go next? Garrett. I'll go. Uh, hi, my name is Garrett. Uh, he, him pronouns are good for me. Um, I'm new to the Arts Council. I think technically this must be my first meeting, even though I feel like I've been to a lot of meetings. Uh, this is maybe the first real one. Um, I'm also new to Northampton. Um, I met Brian uh, because of a work thing. And, um, you know, I, I told him about my history in filmmaking and film production. And I'm eager to get to know people in the arts and culture scene in Northampton and also be a voice for art and artists in my community. So I'm plugged in. And uh, also selfishly, I also joined because I just want to know more about what's going on uh, in the community. So I'm happy to be here and uh, thank you for having me. Oh, should I be popcorning it to somebody? Uh, how about Dana? You want to go next, Dana? Sure, yes. Hi, everybody. I'm Dana Osterling. My pronouns are she, her. And I joined the Arts Council last year, also not too long after I moved to Northampton from Boston. And I was really interested to be a part of it because of my interest in uh, expressive arts therapy. I'm a music therapist and I work for the Foundation for Art and Healing, and I really feel passionately that art improves the health of communities, and I love to get to be a part of that work and promoting all of the great artists that we have of all kinds here in Northampton. So it's been really fun and happy to be here with all of you and have some new faces. Good to see. And I am going to popcorn it to Anna. Uh, hi, I'm Anna Plesny, and uh, I just recently joined the Arts Council. Uh, I've lived in Northampton for 25 years, but have been so involved in the family and work and you know, everything else that uh, life encompasses that I'm eager now to learn more about the arts community and uh, contribute in whatever ways I can. And I will popcorn to Zia. How about you? I think that is someone who is here for public comment. Maybe someone who okay. thinks, Tulani, you want to pop in? OK, so Doris? No, I, I'm going to pop in. Thanks, Tulani. Hi, uh, I am Tawani Davis. I am the I am the director of programming with Spectrum Motion Dance Theater Ensemble. It kind of just comes out of my mouth all the time. Um, <laughs> I am a Northampton native. I was born and raised here, so I went through all of the public school systems. Uh, graduated from Northampton High in 09, and I joined the Arts Council last year as part of wanting to know more about what's going on in the arts in our community, especially uh, as somebody who grew up here, I always felt that I could not see myself as a biracial black and Filipino uh, person, Asian person. I, I felt that there was a lack of diversity or equity and inclusion around what, what experiences or, or what, what I as a brown person would like to see uh, as inclusive for me to participate at all levels, including at the 
at the education level, which is where my advocacy really lies into. It's making sure that our kids have access to the arts and wanting to be able to explore that it is an option beyond just a craft or beyond just a hobby. And I think Northampton has a lot of opportunity and a lot of uh, gaining opportunities to be able to do that for, for our youth and for all of our artists today. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pop corn to, oh, I have no idea. Oh, Jesse, okay. I'm like, I can't see anything. <laughs> Thanks, Jelani. Um, my name is Jesse Hassinger. I go by uh, he or they pronouns. Um, <clears throat> I am, I guess I, I joined about the same time that um, Dana and Jelani did. Um, so I guess coming up on, I don't know, it feels like, it feels like a year and a half, um, but with that, with the, the, vacancy of not meeting it feels also like it's only been a couple of months um i initially was interested in in joining um the arts council um because um uh, i really appreciated what um what NAC has done in the past in terms of its um events its public events um and Knowing Brian for a little bit, um, it was uh, kind of great to see the things that he was putting, helping to put together and bring to the community. And I really wanted to um, uh, join in on that. Um, as a filmmaker and photographer, uh, I am. I was really. Uh, I was really passionate about um, a lot of kind of the film programs that happened, which unfortunately haven't really started back up because of all the COVID restrictions, but um, also dove right into a lot of great other um, aspects of the Arts Council and uh, really took heart in um, seeing how we could move the Arts Council to a place that is more, um, that is thinking about uh, inclusion in a more serious and um, representative way, instead of just having it be uh, voiced, actually uh, see it in action. Um, and, you know, we've started down that path. There's still a long way to go. Um, I will pop it over to Eamon. Hi, I'm Eamon Edge. I am a uh, graphic designer uh, by day <laughs> and at night because that often happens when you work for yourself. Um, I joined the Art Council uh, because I was interested in how the arts uh, here in Northampton, uh, the events that the Art Council puts on, but also how arts can help uh, people in the community. And um, has everybody gone? I think we're waiting on Pete. Oh, uh, me hasn't gone yet, so you're up. Hi, my name's Mai. My pronouns are they, them. Um, I am also, I uh, recently joined the council. Um, I am a graduate student uh, in art therapy and mental health counseling uh, in Springfield College. I live in Northampton. Uh, and I'm also an artist on the side. Um, and I'm really passionate about public art, mural art, community art. Um, so that was why I wanted to join the council. Pete? <clears throat> Hi, everybody. My name is Pete Olson. Uh, I go by he, him. I've been on the council, I think I joined this year. This may be my first real or second real meeting. Um, I joined mostly to be more involved in the Northampton arts community and to learn more about it and how it functions and to maybe make a difference in how uh, things happen. Uh, and that's really my main goal. But that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. And thanks everyone for sharing. We have two um, 
possible members. So I just want to open the floor also to Kay and Eliana, if you want to say hi and, and share your interest, we hope to have you confirmed in the next, I don't even want to guess how long, but soon. Um, but it'd be great while we're all introducing ourselves for, for y'all to be a part of that too. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go. Um, hi everyone, my name is Kay Carroll. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I, um, I'm the uh, digital media manager at ZMA's printmaking in Florence. Um, and uh, I grew up in Northampton. Um, I recently moved back uh, from Boston and I uh, wanted to join the Arts Council because I think a good community is one that takes care of its creators. And I think that institutional support and um, support from local government is a vital part of that. So I wanted to, uh, to learn more about being a part of that as well. Eliana, you wanna say hi? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Eliana, she, her. Um, I'm a new addition to the town, uh, very excited. I am a transplant from New York City and um, I'm an artist. I mainly work in installation art. Uh, the thing that pays my mortgage is me working as a producer, a project manager and a fabricator. And that's what I think I can bring to this counselor to like logistic and how things are done. I know how to manage artists, that's what I do. Um, and just overall, um, love the town, wanna be a part of it. Uh, this is my way to know what's going on, uh, meet more people and kind of have a say and how my town is gonna to look like. So that's why I'm here. Thank you and welcome everyone. This is, I think the most robust group we've had in a long time. So it's gonna take a minute for us all to get to know each other, but hopefully we'll be able to do that at all the events coming up this fall and our monthly meetings and, and out in the community when we see each other. Brian, do you wanna introduce yourself? Hi everybody, <clears throat> I'm Brian Foote. Um, I prefer he and him pronouns. Um, I believe that art is has the power to change people's lives dramatically. And, and one of the most important things to me is that the, it brings community together and uh, challenges um, challenges us to be together, to, to, to interact and to have a, a really good conversation about a lot of things. Um, and it also puts smiles on everybody's face. So my number one uh, reason why I, I was I volunteered uh, to be on the board or the Arts Council in 2008 was because of community engagement and uh, wanting to be involved and know what was going on. And now I, and that has also led me to, to become a staff person. And I'm currently the director of arts and culture for the city. And I'm the executive director of Northampton Arts Council, Inc. Um, so I'll do my best to help everybody, uh, move along because I have probably have the most experience of everybody on this meeting besides maybe Ellen, um, who was on the council before me, um, I'm looking forward to first night amongst other things. We just had a great, uh, weekend of taste of Northampton was in town, uh, and it was really successful. So, uh, I look forward to seeing all your faces in person um, next time we have a, an event, which there is one coming up uh, September 18th, Sunday, September 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, exchange. We're doing collaboration with School of Contemporary Dance and Thought. Um, and that's all I'm plugging right now. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. So because it's our first or one of our first sessions all together, um, Brian, would you mind clicking that group meeting norms hyperlink? Um, I'm going to read through these. The, the, a previous iteration of the council approved these meeting norms, um, but since a lot of us are new, I think it's a good idea to just read through them together, make sure we all understand and, and agree with, with these norms. And if anyone has changes or suggestions, we can bring them or discuss them, okay? So feel free to raise your hand or just unmute and ask a question. If any of this doesn't make sense, I'm just going to try to read through them pretty quickly. But um, you know, we, we won't read them every time, but for now, just a reminder that when we're, we're speaking in a group meeting setting, we wanna to try to use I statements, um, speaking from our own individual experiences and perspectives and not speaking for other people or on behalf of groups. 
Um, we want to assume good intentions. We're all here because of a shared passion and love for our arts and culture and for our city. And, you know, part of that is assuming that we're all here with, with good intentions and also that maybe we have to be aware of our own personal privileges and biases when we show up into spaces like, like this one. Um, if something happens that folks aren't thrilled about, we wanna be sure to call people in and not out. So we should be sure to point out problems as they emerge. We wanna have a culture of pointing out problems, but with the intention of empowering people to be part of a solution and not shaming people. Um, we wanna think about intention versus impact. So what does it mean if, if you say something and, and hurt somebody and you didn't mean to? Well, you know, we gotta accept responsibility for that um, harm that might've been caused and apologize and do better next time. And one of our, our previous, you know, very dear um, council members who's no longer with us, you know, wrote this, this document, which is hyperlinked here on how to apologize. So if that feels like something that's scary, um, you know, Kent Alexander gave you a, a how-to document um, that, that'll guide you, guide you through that. Um, so feel free to read that in your own time. Uh, we want to lean into discomfort because when we feel uncomfortable or feel hurt, we wanna look at that as an opportunity for growth. Um, we're all learning and growing <laughs> all the time. Otherwise it would be very boring life to live. So we wanna think of that as um, an opportunity for change and improvement. Really important this one, we gotta respect people's pronouns and gender identity. You don't wanna assume people's pronouns. Um, and if you're unsure, defaulting to they is okay. Um, and if this is something that's like not a familiar uh, concept to folks, if pronouns are like, what are you talking about? I would really encourage you to email me or email Brian. We have a ton of resources for you. We can talk about it. Um, and we can practice offline just to make sure that like, if, if it feels unfamiliar, we get all familiar together. Um, stories stay, lessons leave. This doesn't apply too much. We use open meeting law. We, we'd come up with this guideline a while ago. We might need to revise it. Um, but we want to respect people's confidentiality and personal stories. Um, when people share, you know, we want to respect that you can take the lesson you learn from those conversations, but we don't want to turn our work into like gossiping or rumors or things like that. Granted, it's all open meeting law, so it doesn't happen a ton in the setting, but something to keep in mind. Be mindful of airtime. I know I've been talking a lot. Hopefully that will never happen again. Um, but if you are talking a lot in a meeting, you want to try to create space for others and be mindful of the identities you hold as you take up space in meetings. Finally, we want to set really clear boundaries and consequences as a team. So we're responsible for creating the culture here. We're responsible for making this like a good, pleasant, fun experience for everyone. Um, so part of that is going to mean that we're all enforcing these rules together, creating new rules together, um, and supporting each other as we as we try to build this, this team and this community. Um, so something else to keep in mind. Anyone have any questions or things they want to change or add to these? to these, these guidelines for how we meet. All right, so into the agenda we go. Um, this is like, that was like part one of orientation, I suppose. Oh yeah, I was, I just wanted to like have a, cause you know, I do most of the scheduling. That's the next thing I wanna talk about. Um, so, Traditionally, and I know everybody's new, so that doesn't really matter. We would have business meetings for the Arts Council on the second Tuesday of every month. Um, but we are all have different schedules, and I'm open to you know discussing a different time. If not everybody, everybody's here today, which is like amazing, and I'm really happy about that. So if we can, if we want to stick with this second Tuesday of every month, we can do so. Uh, if the, if everybody else has a different, if we can get consensus on a different time, that is a standing monthly time and day to meet. I'm, you know, this is the time we can discuss it. Um, I'll tell you some other uh, things. So for us to meet, I have to submit the agenda 48 hours um, before the meeting, but business day. So it's Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30 p.m. Um, so I usually submit the agenda by Wednesday or Thursday, and then I share the agenda with the council members, and that's when you would normally get the agenda. So everybody get the agenda 
last Thursday or before. Uh, that's the benchmark I tried to set for business meetings. Uh, and um, what else? Notifications. Um, I use Google Calendar and I share that um, calendar link with your email addresses, with reminders. Uh, I think there's two reminders in there. There's also a link to the Zoom meeting. Um, and most of the time there's a link to the agenda as well. Other places to find this is on the uh, northamptonma.gov website. Uh, you can find the agenda there because it's uploaded by Friday. Uh, I will do my best to email um, everybody uh, the agenda on the Thursday. I'll try to you know, make sure everybody knows another email on that Monday, the day before the meeting. Uh, I'll send another reminder email out uh, with the agenda again. Uh, if there's any other uh, notifications or scheduling um, uh, concerns or how to do a generator, okay. Uh, please, uh, this is the time to talk about it. So if you want to have a different data meet every month, please let me know. Um, and if you want a different notification scheme outside of Google Calendar and emails directly from me, please let me know. Yeah, Jesse. Um, thanks. I didn't want to just jump in there if anybody else had um, anything to say. Uh, Brian, I want to. I want to thank you for the notifications for this meeting. Um, I know that I had uh, questioned notifications from the last meeting, um, but I really appreciate all of the all of the ones that went out this time. I don't know if you did anything differently or I had changed any of my settings in my Gmail, but I saw like all three or four notifications for this time, and uh, I I love it. Um, I'm throwing out as a possibility to switch to Mondays. I know that might push everything back on your side. Like you were saying, you would need to then have it uploaded on Thursday if I'm following the, your time frame correct. Um, but uh, Tuesdays are kind of like up and up and down for me at work. We frequently have events Tuesdays through Thursdays, so Monday is kind of like a a better day for me. And I know that I'm only one of many. So just throwing that out there as a possibility. From my perspective, Mondays work perfectly fine. I would be more than happy to, to um, do our business on Mondays. Uh, I know Jada mentioned in the chat, I don't know if anybody saw that, that on Tuesdays, she would prefer six. Is that the same as on Monday? Would you prefer six instead of seven, Jada? Or is, is seven okay on Mondays? Oh. Here, I'll unmute you. I'll try to. Okay. Um, my is raising their hand. Go ahead, Maya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mondays do not work for me. Tuesday does also work for me if we want to reevaluate the Tuesday earlier time. And in the chat, um, Tulani wrote that only Tuesday and Friday work for for them for her jesse are there is there another tuesday that might work better like a first second third fourth or is you just usually programming at the at the the store usually on tuesdays doesn't matter what time of the month it is yeah, it really doesn't matter. It's kind of random based on um, based on release dates and availability of authors. But um, I can, you know, I can work around it. Obviously, tonight uh, we are actually having an event, and I'm not there. So as long as I know going into like the schedules and stuff, I okay. can um, I can work around it. 
though getting on at six o'clock might be difficult for me because I'll be traveling at that time. I usually get home around 6, 15, 6, 30, but I can always log on on my phone and then jump on okay. the computer so I, I can work around the six o'clock as well. Okay. Six is a little early for me. I usually walk in the door at six. Um, yeah. So if, if we can make it like 6.15, it would be better. Yeah, I have to like make dinner and stuff. I, I like, I, you know, I don't, I, it's a little, 6.30 could be a good compromise. Um, any other uh, notification or scheduling um, discussion? My, my opinion is I'd, I'd like to keep it the same just for, for you know, because everybody is used to it. Uh, and it seems like there's a lot of, uh, I think pushing it back to 630 could work. It just would be difficult, I think, for a lot of people's schedules. Um, so we'll take it into account. I feel like there's no consensus. I will send out a little survey um, tomorrow or this week before next month. It'll still be the second Tuesday. And I'll put in um, a couple different times and people can uh, let me know on the council and we'll see through democratic process and, instead of, because uh, it's something that we can talk about outside of, a, a it doesn't pertain to open meeting law of scheduling. So we can, move on now and then talk about the next agenda item and then I'll, I'll work on it on the outside. And that's something we can email about. So I'll, I'll work on that. And uh, for now, I'm gonna keep it at, till, at seven, unless there is a lot of, the, if there's a consensus of board member, of council members that want it at 6.45 or 6.30. Um, thanks for everybody's input. Go ahead, Danielle. I think we can also, like if the meetings are going too late for folks, like we can make a, a real effort to keep it to seven from seven to 8.30 or seven to 8.15. Because I think sometimes when we're doing grants, like the meetings can go for, until nine, 9.30, 10, and it can be really exhausting. So on grant days, maybe we can start earlier for sure. So we're not going super late or we can have second meetings if we need to. So we're not going really late into the night for folks. I'm hoping in December that we can meet in person in City Hall again to, to discuss the grants because it's a lot more effective. Uh, but I think, you know, because of time, speaking of that, Danielle, I think we should move on to the next agenda item. Yep. So um, Poet Laureate and Youth Poet Laureate. Does any, has any, oh, Jeff, maybe Jesse? I'm not sure if anyone has worked on the Poet Laureate and wants to give an introduction to what that work is or to Lonnie. I don't know if you worked on Youth Poet Laureate and if not, then maybe Brian, you can just give a quick overview of what those roles are. Um, you know, we're looking for council members that are interested or have experience in poetry or literature. Uh, and we would need at least one uh, council member to represent on the search committees uh, for both. Um, and the search committee, in the past that I've seen has usually uh, includes the last po the, the, the most recent poet laureate an arts council member and then another um, member of the poetry community that's a local the local poetry community and that would just be a sub a subcommittee that's formed to search for we have two separate the poet laureate and then the youth poet laureate uh, and I can share some documents but the the youth poet laureate is a one-year um, commitment and the poet laureate is a two-year commitment um, and there's um, very informal duties that go with both of those uh, um, titles for Northampton it's very important that we we do this it's it's uh, something that the council has been doing a long time and it's a it's a well well-respected title in the arts community so you know at this point I would love uh, a council member that has some interest for somebody to, to basically be the spearheading 
this. Go ahead, Jesse. Oh, I was just going to say I have some interest. I don't think I can spearhead it, but I can. I definitely would love to be a part of it. We got Jesse. I'm going to take notes on this right now. Jesse would like to be. Which one would you like to be involved with, Jesse? The Youth Poet Laureate, the Poet Laureate? These are two separate committees. Um, yeah, I, either one. I mean, I'm I'm happy being being on either. So let's see who else, uh, where you know. Okay. Which one gets the fewest people, and I'm I'd be happy to put myself in that category. Um, we'll just start with the poet laureate because it's the most uh, you know, it's the longest running one. And then I'll put you in touch with Karen Schofield. Um, and then we could see you. she she has a lot of uh, experience um, with this because she's our current poet laureate. And she was on the youth poet laureate committee and she's worked for I think three years because her uh, her because of COVID, we extended her her title for an extra year. So she'll be the person that's the most experienced with this um, subcommittee. So I'll connect you to tomorrow and then that'd be great. I think it'd be like, you know, three subcommittee meetings of about an hour, maybe more. I don't know. That's about what I get from it. Um, and then, you know, it'll be, you know, it's usually a third community member that is a poet or is a poet publisher or is somehow, in, you know, very inextricably linked with the poetry community locally. And then you guys will um, throw out some nominations and then you'll 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 work on it and you'll do a vote the three members will vote on who should be the next poet laureate um, I can share some all documents as well it's codified um, on google docs but I appreciate that Jesse that's amazing thank you so much um, and then I think when we start talking to Karen we should uh, see if somebody else is interested in being on the youth poet laureate committee um, is anybody interested in being the Youth Poet Laureate Committee? Uh, I'm kind of interested, but I'm a little concerned that I'm not qualified. <laughs> well, at this point, I think we don't have uh, a literature, you know, someone with experience with literature or poetry on our council right now. So I think you're you're uh, you're going to be as qualified as anybody else here. So, and, I don't, and I don't think that you really need literary experience. I think the experience, I mean, it would be great. Like I think most folks, if you can appreciate writers and writing and creatives, wonderful as a baseline. But I think one of the key skill sets is gonna be community outreach and making sure that folks know about this opportunity and are excited about the opportunity. Um, and Karen is kind of our like, literary expert so we can lean on her for that expertise yeah. and if you're excited to work with a poet you don't have to be a writer you don't have to be a poet um but it's really about getting other people who are writers and are poets excited about the opportunity and supporting them in the process karen's well is very well organized and very good at logistics and she'll be a pleasure to work with that's my experience has been my experience with karen so um i think it will be a nice experience and you'll learn about a whole um arts like a, the poetry community in town so that's going to be um a great experience so thank you garrett thank you jesse um i'll send some uh exploratory emails out tomorrow i'm taking notes right now to to get those kick started that's great i really appreciate that um does anybody else have any more discussion around um, forming those two committees or interest. Uh, Kay and um, Alonia, you can also, Alona, you can also can join the committees as are anybody that's on this um, meeting is if they're interested, uh, you can definitely join one of the subcommittees if you're interested. Which one would you like to join? Oh, I just uh, give a thumbs up. So okay, I, okay. <laughs> just got All it. Right. <laughs> All right, well, then we'll, uh, if there's no more discussion, we'll move on to the next um, uh, agenda item. Brian, was was uh, Jada's uh, comment oh, in the chat? Oh, I didn't see it. I don't have all, every single, was Jada's hand up? Oh, I can send, yes, I can send you info about this position, Jada. 
Um, here, let me give me a second. I'll go look and I'll link it right into the the meeting there. Okay, we're back on the agenda. I link that, that will help uh, Garrett, that will help Jesse. Uh, the Youth Polaroid Selection Committee is a little different. Um, Jade, if you click on that, I can email it to you. Yes, Jade, I will definitely do that. After the meeting, I'll, I'll send that to you. Um, 7.50, let's move, if, if any of there's a more discussion about the search committees, I'm really glad that we're starting this off. We're, we're late with it and getting moving forward is great. So I really appreciate um, uh, Jesse and Garrett volunteering and your interest as well, Jada. Um, so the Florence paint mural, um, I, we have, we had Rochelle, Rochelle's here. And, uh, if she wants to just introduce it, I know I've sent everybody the materials that Rochelle shared with, with us. Um, and we're, we're thinking about Rochelle is here to, to just, you know, we're being reflective and trying to, you know, follow the arts ordinance around public art and mural art in Northampton, Florence and Leeds. And she has been very, very cooperative and to share her process with us. So I'm looking forward to hearing from her. Thanks. Am I on now, Brian? <laughs> thank you. Thank, I just want to start with thanking everybody for inviting me here. This, do we have the drawing or how do you want me to start with that, Brian? The, and then I can, there's the drawing. The mural will be A, History of Florence. And it, I have a commitment from the Florence Paint Building to use their wall. The wall is, 20 feet long and six feet high. So we've designed a little splash guard. I always do that for all my murals in New York and here. It's to for the snow and the schmutz and the, and the rain. It's just a little bit because this wall isn't that big. Um, and then a, a, a foot if you can see that border on the bottom and the mural itself will be four and a half feet. A mural a woman is gonna be doing, I don't know where it's gonna be though. Uh, is somebody talking to me? Sorry, we just we just muted someone, someone's uh, mic went off mute. Please continue. Thank you, Thank you Danielle. The, um, <clears throat> so the, the painting should, we've designed it, which is what you're looking at on the screen. We, the painting should start in the spring of 2023. And it will be a community mural. I did one in Northampton on the bike path and back of Smith College stables. And that mural, the theme was four seasons in the valley. Thank you, Brian. And I had, I did an open call for painters and I had about 35, 40 painters from ex experience is not necessary. That's my way of, of doing a, a community mural. They, Can you and, talk more about the process, Rochelle, the community mural aspect, um, how, it, how you find um, people to paint with you, yep. how you concepted, the um, the mural and things like that. Sure, this mural was done. We had a, a team of design, what I call designers, because it's the history of Florence. We did an an incredible amount of research. 
interviewing people, books, libraries, videos, pamphlets, because Florence has a, an extremely formidable history. So that was the first aspect of doing the mural is the initial phase where we did the research and then the drawing of what we selected as the research. And by the collage method, we cut out the drawings that we did and collaged it on, I did two inches equals a foot. So the drawing that we worked on was 40 inches. And I have, just to show you, so you'll get an idea, just a little bit. This is, this is what I mean by the collage method. We cut, moved, talked, talked more, and made the decisions on the final composition of the mural. So that's the technical part of, of doing this, which I again have to say is the first phase. And I, and I was awarded a grant from the Community Foundation of Western Mass Valley Creates for the initial phase. I wrote a proposal and they, they funded just the first part of what I'm talking about now. The second part is the painting. And then we sent the information to Brian because I need a permit for the, for the mural because it's going to be seen from the street. And I'm just waiting for your thumbs up. <laughs> and I'm waiting and waiting until the spring when I'll be doing fundraising for the painting part, March, April, May, something like that. I recruit by sending out massive amounts of emails, social media to get painters. I always, I always get a lot of painters because it's sexy and people want to paint. You know, they and their name goes on the wall and all kinds of acknowledgements, which the council will have an acknowledgement and the foundation and so on and so forth. We'll have the acknowledgements with the painters. So that, you know, and people want to try it. They, they've never worked big before. They've never painted before. I, I had a nine-year-old kid working on the bike path. His mom brought him and said, Jason likes to paint and we put him on the wall. So that, that's, that's, I'm not worried about that part of the process ever, ever, ever. And I don't do scaffold because of the community. I'm, I'm a big proponent of safety for the community. So maybe it's a stepladder, certainly um, if you feel comfortable, you can't stand, then you could sit in a chair and paint all, all levels of, you know, we think about everything in terms of the community. So did I cover everything you asked for, Brian? Thanks so much, Rochelle. And I oh, hope you're welcome. Thanks for coming to the meeting. Um, I'd like to open uh, this up to discussion. Um, uh, please feel free to raise your hand and or to just um, talk about uh, what you, talk about this mural. I really appreciate the approach to research, that it was a three month long community process that indigenous elders were consulted as part of the writing of this history. I really appreciate that um, not only indigenous people past, present and future are included, but also um, we have the story of Sojourner Truth, David Ruggles, um, and, and leading up to, to, to Bombex as a site, like the future of, of um, arts and culture is also included in the mural. So those were some of the things that stood out and were particularly resonant with me um, about the project. Thanks Danielle, for might I respond to you? Sure. Thank, thank you. We set up the mural as past past where we started with indigenous and we went through the 1800s 
of, of Florence. And we, on the right-hand side, we ended with contemporary. So we have Bombex in there, we have Zia Mays in there, we have Florence Diner. And, and we talked, and I don't have to tell you because you're a counsel and you, you meet and you, you talk. We thrashed out every aspect of this mural, which way Sojourner was facing, who to put into Zia Mays, what we have two native women in the contemporary area they are communicating and holding a plant. We were really sensitive about everything you just talked about, Danielle. I uh, thank you so much for that because we worked very hard on being what I call smart about it. Thank you. Does anyone else have like feedback or comments, questions? I just want to say thank you for doing it. I know my kids are going to love it, and um, we're, we'll you. definitely be there for the painting process. We're oh, in good. Florence, so we're definitely going to be uh, be watching as it's being painted. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Already painters. <laughs> thank you. Jesse? Yeah, I just wanted to give other people a chance since I've been talking a lot. Um, <clears throat> did you, uh, I know in, in your uh, historical um, research, you spoke with um, local historians and uh, artists and indigenous elders and um, other people. I'm curious if you have gone back to any of them with the uh, drawing as it is now to get their feedback um, on on how it, how they're being depicted. I waited for this meeting, Jesse, because we need the permit. I did not want to disseminate the drawing until the permit was secured. I didn't want to fundraise. I didn't want to do anything until this was secure. And then I'll tend to what you're talking about, for sure, for sure. Yeah, because in a mural, I've been doing this for 30 years, there's always corrections, always, always corrections. So thank you for bringing that up, Jesse. But I, I put everything on hold until the permit. Does that answer your question, Jesse? Um, I guess it, it brings up more questions than answers for me, honestly, um, because it is, you're saying that you need the permit before you're gonna go back to the people that you're going to uh, already have spoken with to present this. And that it seems like a cart before the horse to get the permit at that point. Well, um, the, okay. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying, but the people that I spoke to gave me the imagery. So that, that was sort of okay in my mind to, you know, to go forward. Sure. So, I, no, I, I understand that. And I, I completely want to uh, respect and appreciate your, your yeah. process um, that, that you've gone through. It's obviously been very uh, thoughtful, and um, I, I really appreciate as, um, and I want to reflect what Danielle said as well, uh, everything that you've, you've done up until now. I think I just want to take that one step further to make sure that we're not, um, that we're keeping, keeping those people um, that you spoke with uh, in communication as to how they're being represented because a representation of, of one thing um, in the idea process, when it actually gets onto paper, can, can be ill-represented um, unintentionally even. I so I, I just wanna make sure that, you know, we're having, we're completing the loop here and not just leaving something hanging. Um, I and I, you know, appreciate the, indigenous elders, but I think um, I'm also wondering if 
there were any uh, younger uh, indigenous people that you are um, inviting in to discuss this with as well, um, considering it's not just um, elders who live in this area right now. Definitely. I mean, I'm tapped into that community through some friends. So that's, you know, something that I was okay about, you know, speaking with them on, on a friend level. But I, thank you. I understand what you're saying. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Would anyone like to move to vote on whether or not this project constitutes public art? Do I vote, Daniel? <laughs> not, unfortunately, no. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. That was a joke. Thank you. <laughs> I will move to vote. Would anyone like to second the motion to vote on whether this piece constitutes public art? I second the motion. Okay, so if you're in favor of defining this proposal as public art, thus granting <laughs> Rochelle, the permission she needs to continue the process, please raise your hand virtually or on the screen. So it looks like we have a yay from Garrett, a yay from Dana, from Anna, um, Amen, Pete, Tulani, And that's and and I'm I'm voting yay for it. Jesse, is that a yay? Okay, Jesse's a yay. Would anyone who has not voted like to is anyone abstaining from the vote? Yes, I said I'll abstain until I get to know um, more about it. Um, that's okay. Yeah, I also am abstaining and I agree with Jada. Okay, so we have two abstentions. I might, can I change to an abstention? Can I change my vote? Does anyone know if that's? I think we may like, yes, I think it's fine to change your vote or we can just redo the vote. Mm. Brian, do you know if we should just redo the vote? Can we redo the vote? Uh, hold please. <laughs> um. Just as an administrator, I'd like to, you know, try to um, encourage everybody, like I do in the emails, to to try to read about the project ahead of time, and come prepared to the meeting to to do business. And it's no problem that you didn't if you didn't do it, but um, that's all. But uh, I don't know Robert's rules around revoting. I have to check that. Uh, go ahead, Tulan. Did you know? Do you know? Oh, no, I don't know, not off the top of my head, but I do just want to be clear here. We were just asking whether or not this is quantifyingly oh. as public art, and I would be voting on that, but my note would be let's encourage our artists to go back and make sure that everything is okayed and that we are not harming anyone. They, but I am voting yes. Oh, okay, okay, that. Uh, I am voting yes that this is public art. Thanks for that clarification, Tulani. I 100% I agree with agree. you. Thank you. So I just want to clarify. So we have seven yays and three abstentions. So we have Dana's abstention, Jesse's abstention, and Jada's abstention. And then, no, I'm sorry. I, my, I, I'm sorry. Brian, I didn't abstain. I was just. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, my, uh, Jada, and Dana are abstaining. And then seven yay votes, just to clarify. 
for the, the minutes. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Brian. I'm still checking the procedure on it. That's uh, something that I should know, but I don't. So <laughs> my, my apologies. Me too, um, everyone. I'll have to get better at knowing the, the process better for you know everyone's uh, for the benefit of everyone. Um, and Rochelle, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for doing the project. And and I'm happy to offer like my support. And I and if anyone else on on the council wants to offer support in like connecting you with contemporary indigenous artists or other folks that we're in community with, I think that you know it would be great if we could stay in touch and support the work so that you know the recommendations we make are also that we're also part of that work and supporting it. Um, so if you know of any artists or or folks in the community that you would like to connect Rochelle with, if you're open to that, Rochelle, I would just encourage folks on the council to to be in touch with you. As I, it seems like that's a yes, Rochelle. <laughs> That I would just like to say in, in words that would be excellent for me. And I heard what you said. So what was the outcome of the vote, Brian? I'm Seven sure. yeas and three abstentions. Means there's, there's 10 council members. That means that yes. A I can yes. sleep tonight. You can, can to sleep tonight. tonight. You can sleep can tonight. I full sleep tonight. Yes. And Rochelle, just, you know, from the, uh, the comments from the council, I know you're going to keep in touch with me. You're great at communication and you always follow up. Um, I look forward to connecting you. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to some council members or email them and get some indigenous artists that are maybe younger in the community to connect you with. Okay. I would like that very much. And any of the other communities, please, you, do they have my email, Brian? I, yep. I have it on the um, proposal and okay. I can share far and wide. Um, I have some ideas. And if anybody else in the council has any other ideas of who to connect with, that'd be great. Yes, Thank Tita. You. Thank you so much. I appreciate this meeting and your comments. I, I, it didn't fall on deaf ears, believe me. Thank you so much. Thank May you. Now, Brian? Yeah, bye, Rochelle. Bye-bye. Thank you. See that. Okay. Thank you again. I appreciate it. And contact me, any of you. And paint with me next spring, please. Thank you. Um, guys, I just had a, a question and I didn't know the format to ask. I get um, I get a little, I, I get, maybe I'll say I get confused when people are said indigenous art. I mean, I'm Native American, I'm Cherokee from the Southwest. So I'm, I'm not sure what that entails or I'm not sure if that's just for one group, one ethnic nation. I'm a little confused and I don't wanna like, I didn't wanna like say all that right in front of folks, because I, I just don't, I'm curious about it, because, uh, oh gosh, I just have known people who say, I, I, you know, I'm native, I'm this, I'm this and that. So I just, uh, it's always just been a confusion for me, so. And it's not a, what I, and I don't know that much about art and I couldn't really see it that well, but I, I always feel nervous when I don't know something certain, I'll abstain is not to be, uh, to um, offend anyone. So I get a little nervous when, when um when I do. You you don't you should never be nervous or apologize for how you vote in this space. Thank you for for sharing your your contacts and but you know thank thank you so much Jada. Um, I think a lot of ever I think a lot of people use indigenous as a slippery term. I think it's a often used as a blanket term or in this in the context in the valley I've heard it used as a blanket term to talk about all Native Americans but to your point I mean a, a good question for Rochelle moving forward is like are we thinking specifically about you know people who are indigenous to this land are we thinking about Nipmuc people are we thinking about um you know local indigenous people as opposed to folks who are from Florence originally or from this area as opposed to you know folks from indigenous community outside the US or outside of this region not to say that those folks should also should not also be included in the process but i think you raised like a really important point and would encourage us to like keep having that conversation with Rochelle cuz i think she's open to that and it's it's for it's for y'all it's for like indigenous artists communities to be the ones to decide right
who gets to make those choices, not really me, right? Or Rochelle or anybody um, for that matter. She, she did have Nana Tuck as the only example on her, um, on her piece of paper. And I suppose I, I should have been a little bit more direct and included by saying uh, not just the Nana Tuck nation, but um, other nations that do live uh, locally um, and are residing here. Can I just can I just say this too, also, guys? And um, you know, I just want to be free to say it, and and it's and I and I appreciate. It. I want all the rules so nobody gets uh, offended or anything that I'm saying. Up until I came up here, this is the first time I started seeing um, Native Americans who look more white <laughs> in the South. You know, they mixed with slaves, so there was a lot, a lot of slaves escaped. So you know, we would uh, that would be an issue. But many of us was not able to get into the Dawes Commission to be recognized. So, uh, and it's just so interesting. That's some stuff I'm working on. And then of course I went to graduate school at uh, Dartmouth College where they supposedly was started to teach the savages and uh, there was a Nate house and these discussions were coming, finally coming in about those who were on the reservation. So I just get, uh, a, not anxiety, it's just, it's very interesting. And I'd like to know more. And if we talk about that, this maybe can be something that's expressed in art too. And um, I would like us to feel like we can talk about that and be inclusive and we can all learn about it. I guess in one way, I'm just feeling like the times that we were in Texas and we went to various things as a kid, I just wasn't interested. And now I'm really interested. So um, anyway, that's what's coming up for me. Thank you. Um, should we take a look at the Thorns mural? Any other thoughts, comments? I, I want to hold, like, hold space if we want to share more on, on Jada's points that she raised. Fine. Well, maybe we can all just make a commitment to keep that conversation and that thread going. Thank you, Jada. Um, Brian, will you open us up for the, the Thorns doc? Do we have someone here representing Ernesto? No. Uh, the owner of Thorns uh, asked to be here and I, I uh, do you want me to, uh, I, I didn't think of inviting them at all uh, for this I'm, meeting. I'm just super uh, curious as to how he was chosen, what ties he has to Northampton, uh, what meaning this, uh, mural, this proposed mural has for mm -hmm. the town and, you know, I guess who chose, um, mm -hmm. who chose the theme. So, uh, the, this was a, an open call nationally. This is a private commission by Thorns. Um, Thorns opened up the commission and included the, um, Arts Council member and myself, uh, there was 80, there was a request for qualifications. Um, there were two optional questions that are included in all of our calls. We got 87 applications. And then myself, Mai, and Jody Dole went through all of the 87 um, qualification requests um, and chose four finalists. Uh, on um, technical proficiency, style, and also taking in, into account um, their uh, redressing historical inequities if they're if they came from a population that um, uh, were were had less opportunity in the past, um, and there were two meetings that we had and um, Thorns and Jody, myself and my ended up choosing this as the finalist. Um, the only thematic uh, 
element was that Thorns didn't want the commission to have anything to do with connected with Northampton at all. So they were looking for more design based, less community linked art. Uh, and that was the only um, theme. I can uh, share the request for qualifications I have right here. Did they have a specific reason why they didn't want it connected with Northampton? Uh, no, it's just, you know, that's what the owners wanted of the building. Um, Uh, some other specifications for the re request for qualifications were that more than half half the paint was we're going to use this type of paint called smog armor, which purifies the air from carbon uh, pollution. Uh, and there's other things I linked it in the document there. Uh, and the finalists they were chosen uh, for the similar reasons. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And to to if anybody wants to know exactly where it is, um, if you are walking out the back door of Thorns, uh, where the dumpster is, uh, and you take a right, you'd be in the, the Tuesday Market. And then, so if you go out the back door and you look, you'd be looking at the parking garage. So it's the the wall that is like facing the Armory Street parking lot, I think it's called. This is another public-private coalition. Like, um, there were local artists that applied, um, but I, I, you know, because it was a national call, uh, we got a lot of really amazing artists. Um, the closest artists that made it to the finalists were from um, they were from uh, Vermont. Uh, we had an artist from um, Los Angeles, California, Florida. Uh, and I think the, the last artist that were was the finalist, which then the finalists got paid uh, $500 stipend for creating the designs that you see here. Um, Ernesto, uh, the art is, he, he's got, he's got uh, impactful art. Also very, out of all the artists that we read, he was very um, organized logistically and the experience was, was there because it is operating two boom lifts um, and it's a very large uh, wall. So this is the design concept. Um. And I know this is probably something you don't have an answer for, but I was just looking through the document you just shared. And one mm -hmm. of the photographs has um, the logos that are currently on the back wall, which are not included in this concept art. Do you they're, know? They're that? taking all of that off. Okay, so that's being removed completely. Mm -hmm. and it's not mm -hmm. gonna be put back on, okay. I believe so. I can. Let me, what does it say in the, the request for, in hindsight, I wish we had Ernesto or their, their assistant here, because that would have been helpful, like Rochelle was here, to talk about the art. Um, so, Brian, can I ask a question real quick? Sure. So, is this the final artist and design that you came up that you and Jody agreed on? This is the one like that I sent my I sent my four picks, you know, like my opinions on them, but I didn't know if that if you all like decided. I thought wait, weren't you texting at the time with us regarding this? I thought this is the one uh, that I I told you my top four, but I was not there for the final. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you know I was discussing on the phone with Jody, and um, uh. There was a preference from I thought from you, my, and then Jody for this this particular piece of work. So that's I uh, I demurred my my first choice, and I thought that the owner and somebody with of, of experience 
such as yourself, I was going to go with that. Um, okay. So, so it's decided that this is the artist. That was yes, yes. This is they decided on Ernesto. Okay. We decided on Ernesto. How about that? <laughs> um. Did everybody get a chance to read the concepts? Uh, are there any more discussion questions? Are we again just voting um, because we need to, because this is a public art and this is a vote of, is this a work of art rather than any other thing? Yes. Okay. It's, uh, it's that. Um, if we were using public monies, doing a project ourselves, you know, there's other things to take into advantage, but this is a um, private commission that reached out to the Arts Council or myself, reached out to me and they've been wanting to do a, a mural for five years now. And we've never had the funding to do kind of the process that I envisioned because it's such a big wall, um, but, this is, you know, I'm excited to have uh, just more public art in town or just more murals that are, are you know, impactful and, uh, you know, having an artist visiting. For our, you know, our intents and purposes, we, the call was open. We definitely got a lot of local artists to apply to it, but I just, um, from my perspective and my opinion is that I don't think they had the same technical um, experience in, you know, uh, experiences Ernesto and some of the other more, you know, um, just professional mural artists that, you know, are in the United States. Because uh, I don't think there's as, as many, there's, there hasn't been as much opportunity for painting murals uh, in this area um, until recently. I think there are um, artists that are starting to paint because of endeavors like Fresh Paint in Springfield and uh, the Commonwealth Community Mural Program that um, Britt Rue runs. Uh, there's training, there's workshops now, but I don't think that we're gonna get to the same level as say like a New York City, a Los Angeles, you know, um, maybe some t other places. So uh, I don't think we took the, it wasn't as, as important that they, the artists be local for this particular commission, this, this project. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Mai. Um, would anyone like to move to um, vote on whether or not this project constitutes public art? I would like to, do I make a motion that this, I'd like to vote on this as public art? Yes. Would anyone like to second? I'll second. Thank you, Jada. Thank you, Jesse. And um, we're going to do a, a yay, abstention, and nay vote. So to start, uh, who does that, please raise your hand if you're voting yes to the motion that this is public art. So it looks like we have my, myself, we have Garrett, Jesse, Jada, Tulani, Dana, Pete, Eamon. Anyone else on the yay? And Anna, okay. And um, any nay votes? Any abstentions? Okay, so just to reiterate for the minutes, everyone has voted yay on this. If not, can you unmute? Because I'm having a hard time seeing. Okay, I think we are unanimous, yay. That this project constitutes public art. Thank you, everyone. Um, next agenda item is um, grant extension request. Brian? Meg Bandera, um, you see the email that I shared. Uh, um, they reached out to me due to, you know, issues 
Uh, they were just awarded in FY21 grants. Um, we just sent out those notifications in August and they immediately got back to me and asked for an extension request due to the factors here. Um, it just for an LCC grant round, it, it needs to have a vote uh, in, a, in a meeting. So uh, you see the um, grant extension um, request. So I would say, you know, familiarize, familiarize yourself with it and then see if we can uh, have a motion to vote to move forward with it. So if anyone would like to move to vote on whether or not to grant the extension, please. I move to grant the extension. Second. C can you move to vote on whether to grant the extension? I move to vote to grant the extension. Second. Okay, so those in favor of granting the extension, please. Raise a hand. This looks like we've got Mai, Danielle, Dana, Garrett, Jesse, Jada, Tulani. Um, okay. And then abstention. If it's anyone abstain from the vote. Is anyone nay on the vote? If I didn't say your name, can you unmute and say what your vote is? Sorry. I vote yes. Thanks, Eamon. Pete, I don't know if I got you. As do I. I vote yes. Great, and Anna, okay. So we are, uh, I think, unanimous yes on the extension. Thank you. Um, so, Next up on the agenda is our grant review process. Um, has everyone had a chance to take a look at these documents? Um, Do you wanna just talk about what we wanna update? Sure, so um, as many of you alluded to in the intro, um, our grant process by Zoom is um, can be a bit grueling. So I've been trying to brainstorm ways and I invite anyone who has other suggestions to share them, ways to streamline our grant review process. And I participated in a grant review process with um, another arts organization that I think went really um, smoothly right now for, for our new members. Um, the process is that we each individually read every grant application, and then each board member is assigned a category to present those grant applications in meetings together. Once those presentations are over, there's a discussion, and then there's private scoring of each grant. And then Brian accumulates those scores and we come back together and meet to allocate the funds. So especially as we get more and more grant applications, it becomes really um, challenging from a time standpoint to present every single grant and discuss every single grant. So the, the change that I, I scaffolded out and proposed um, for discussion is one in which we pre-score, everyone still reads every application. We pre-score according to our criteria that we voted on every application and get those pre-scores to Brian so that he can let us know the top 50% of scores. And then we present only on those top 50% or whatever number we decide on. Um, as a way to sort of compensate for the fact that the percentages might not be, um, or that the rubric may not be equitable or, or all encompassing, each council member would also have the opportunity to champion um, up to three applications, which would mean that you have the opportunity to say, no matter what this 
application receives in terms of a score, we're gonna present it and discuss it. So even if it gets a zero, I feel so strongly about this application that we're gonna present it. And then we just would also decide, you know, if there were a couple that we wanted to present that didn't make it into that top 50%, we could still present them, discuss them and vote on them. And it's just a way to cut down some of our um, presentation time. And it would put the burden on us to sort of do the pre-work of, of evaluating scores um, since we're doing that reading anyway. Um, but that said, if anyone else has other ideas for how to streamline our evaluation process or questions about this one or want to discuss, please feel free to unmute and chime in. Um, I have one question about it. Uh, if so, say, you know, we're all looking at the 60 some uh, applications on our own ahead of time, right? Uh, could that not result in, say, one applicant, you know, getting 15 emails with questions instead of like one? So I think we would have to either, so, so Eamon is asking a question about the outreach process. Sometimes when we read applications, if the, if the materials in the application are not complete, we reach out to the applicant and ask them to fill in the blank. And I think we would still have to have point people who are responsible for doing outreach on, you know, particular, um, verticals or categories um, that could happen before the presentations or it could happen um, before the pre-score. Would do you think that would solve your your sort of the 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 issue of not having the pre-information before scoring, Amen? Oh, no. Um, so I was just envisioning a scenario where, um, you know, in the the month that we have to read and provide, you know, provide the preliminary scores for each application, you know, you, Talani, uh, Jesse, and I might all have the same question or a couple of different questions for the same applicant. So then the applicant is getting, is fielding questions from, you know what I mean? Like, so if people are, if somebody from the council is assigned the category, right, then does that turn into then like Jesse, Talani, you sending me your questions for that one app? You know, like that's, yes, that's where I'm trying to like figure out like how that part works in this scenario. Jada, did you have a response to this question or something? Um, yeah, I was just thinking about it. I mean, I came in. It's kind of like, you know, you get thrown in the swimming pool, you got to learn to swim. So and actually, it was kind of a thrilling, but very frightening time. And I really didn't think about all these other elements that go to it. I was just thinking because of everything. I didn't know what was going on uh, in the community. But I, I don't know what I thought. I don't know if we got to, you know, you got invited to go see them. You know, I, I guess everybody submitted this stuff because I guess when I was listening everybody seemed to know these groups you've seen them before so i think that because you were you know or me thinking that you were in in the field that you got to know them better and um and then this was just you know one of another application of many but you knew sort of other people and that i thought seemed very helpful at least for me in um in seeing it you gave me a lot of clarity with it so i um you know, just still being a newbie with here, I would, I, you know, I would think I'd have a book of questions if I looked through it without the group. But if there was a, you know, group, you know, the category, I mean, we could still do that. But um, I just think it's all interesting. I, I, I haven't. Um, whatever you have now seems fine, and if you want to tweak it and make it better, gosh, that's really wonderful. Jesse has his or their hand up. Um, I I guess I have kind of a response to uh, Amos' question, then also a, a kind of a comment on my own. Um, I I get where you're coming from, Amon, with with that, and I think that we do need to have some sort of point person for 
still have point people for the um, uh, for the metiers, for lack of a better word, that for some reason I can't think of right now. Um, and I think it would probably behoove us to maybe do a uh, first round of scoring, like in that month that we're looking through everything, we'll score everything and compile the questions that we have. And either before or after, I'm not sure which would be better, um, the initial scoring gets sent over. Um, or perhaps while Brian is doing the tallying, the people that are responsible for each category will then reach out to those people um, and it can be delegated as such. So if there's six categories and three people on each category, um, each one of those people will get, might get like one person to contact based on questions from that everybody else has kind of sent in um, that then they can defend the uh, at the presentation. Um, I don't know if that's helpful or not. My query slash comment is that uh, the championing process, I love the idea of that, but I wonder if it shouldn't come later after there's been the 50% tallying. So we know which projects were voted lower. And if we like one of the projects that was voted lower and feel like it should be higher, that's when we would um, do the champion, like select our, our champion. So in the experience that I was a part of, we, we pre-championed, but it, there needs to be sort of a pre-conversation where we say, okay, these are our 50%. These are the champions that maybe were or were not in 50%. Is there anything else that we need to discuss? So I think there can be opportunities for people to champion in that moment. I think there can be opportunities to bring applications. And I think if one person on the council wants to present an application or a grant because they think that it's great, then maybe we need consensus as a group to agree to do that. But I would think that we would all say, yes, you know, one of us sees merit in an application. We want to hear that application presented. Um, I for one like this new approach. I think that there's probably gonna be bumps that we'll need to smooth out based on our own participation of it. Um, but it seems like we're trying to, seems like we'll be able to cut back maybe like a third to even a half of the time spent. And that's gonna be hopefully a positive thing. Um, as long as we are able to build in uh, those moments where we can you know, insert, well, this is something that I really feel needs to have a second look or a third look at because it maybe didn't deserve to be voted down. Um, so I, yeah, I exactly what you were just kind of saying, like if we can build in maybe more than one of those things into the process, I think that could only behoove us. Yeah, I think and maybe I didn't, clarify it in that process that I wrote out, but I think it would be important to clarify a process or like a, a confirmation of the grants that are getting presented. So that those that fall outside of a, a rubric score will still be presented. Really what it is is a way not to define like what 60 or 80 applications we're gonna discuss. It seems, for me, it feels more like a way to eliminate <coughs> the few applications that we get that are really like not relevant to our mission or, um, or to the city of Northampton. And it seems like an easier way to, to cut some of those that we end up presenting anyway. Um, so on that the timeline, the reading period between October 18th and November 9th, November 18th, would that be 
we would have the point people during that period connecting to like streamline questions for folks or that wouldn't happen until after the preliminary score sheet and if we if because I do think sometimes it's helpful to have that be able to ask questions while you're reading even for preliminary scoring in case there's big things we're missing so if we do that maybe we just need like an additional piece of project management that there's like a spreadsheet that everybody whoever the point person is can like add in like people can still sort of have their grants that they focus on to be the outreach person and then they can get the information on the spreadsheet by like the middle of the month I don't know that might just be a helpful thing to add if I'm understanding correctly what the timing for that is but maybe I'm not I think it would be important to have the questions answered by November 22nd to November 30th. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, mm -hmm. if we're having questions answered during the reading period, it's going to fall on, it's going to fall on the like person who's in charge of that uh, category to communicate the answers out to everybody, essentially mm -hmm. to present the grant. So I think it, again it's a preliminary score it's not the final score like I I think it'll even out I don't think that someone's answer to a question will like radically change their score um but that said if it if it does then I think it's on the person who is presenting that category when we decide what when we vote on like which mm -hmm. presentations happen to say oh well all the questions seem to uh all the questions about this thing have really great answers. I think we should present it even though it's not in the top 50%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I will also say for new folks, like often, I, I, I don't think there's a ton of outreach. Maybe it depends on the category. I've only ever been in the visual arts, really reviewed the visual arts category. And occasionally there's outreach if people don't include supplemental materials or if there are questions about, um, you know, logistics behind the performance accessibility behind behind the present the grant application, but um, I don't I don't know how how difficult that process will be um, within this new setup. So from my experience, there is a note section in the smart simple system when or that we all use to access the online grants. I don't know if those that would be effective. Would that be effective to have the um, presenter of the category link, you know, new supplemental materials or make comments? I reached out to so and so about this question I had or say there's another person that's not a presenter that has a question about the grant, they can ask the presenter in the notes section to say, hey, um, Garrett, can you look into this um, discrepancy I saw in the budget? Can you ask the, the applicant? And then Garrett can then respond in the notes section. Uh, is that a possibility during the reading period? I think we would just need to have a specific um, cutoff date where those notes could be made because if we're saying throughout the entire reading period, those notes could be made, then we all have to go back and check everything on November 18th to make sure that there's no notes that we missed, right? Because I may not be able to read everything until November 14th and somebody else may not be able to, may be able to read everything um, because they have more time in, in October. And so they've read everything through by October you know, 25th. Um, so if we're saying that everybody has the chance to ask a question if they want to, and I know those questions can only be like, you know, there might only be two or three in the course of 60 projects, 
um, per person, but that still adds up. Um, we would just all need to know that by November 18th, we all need to go back and check what we're responsible for so that we can then uh, group those questions together and reach out. And then we have until November 22nd through 30th to kind of make sure that all of those questions are, are addressed um, in the discussion. This is, this is a new add on to our previous process. So in the past, only the person representing the category would be the one to like come up with those questions and ask the artist. We never, like I never went to, you know, the person managing music saying, what is the venue like before the discussion? So I'm curious if that's something that feels necessary to people or if it, if, I mean, I personally kind of trust that the person in charge of the category will ask those questions and bring it to the presentation. But curious I what think it's, I'm and, sorry, I, I think it's because, you know, from the old way, I'll call it, we start out knowing, all right, Danielle is doing A, Eamon's doing B, that we know someone's going to take care of questions, right? This way, it's kind of uh, going the opposite way, like, okay, crowd, read these. And then we're like, you know, coming up with Danielle does A, Eamon does B. I think that's probably why the this these questions are like the thought about like, oh, what if we all have questions about for the one person? I think that's why that's coming up now as opposed, but you're totally right. Nobody, you know, like, but before there was like, you know, there was somebody handling that category. And now for a month, like there'd be nobody technically handling the category. Um, one thing I was sort kind of thinking, just listening to people talk and like, you know, and what's coming to mind is I wonder if the, you know, if we consider like the reading period or what have you, and when we turn our votes, like that, you know, things that come out of there is come to committee. So if we have 60 applicants and we go through during reading period, and it turns out that 20 of them meet a certain threshold, then from that point onward, we only deal with those 20. So, you know, whichever ones make it out of the quote unquote committee of the reading period, then we're dealing just with those ones. And those are the ones that we kind of do our abbreviated regular process for. That seems to me like to eliminate a little bit of maybe question or double work or potential, especially thinking about um, what Jesse was raising as far as like, we don't know when people will block off some time in their own schedule in that month to do this work so that and that could you know result in some duplication of efforts there maybe too and i think jada had raised their hand as well yeah um i don't know you know i'm still thinking about the new new being new on this and I don't know anything about that uh, system that you have. I think this this group is probably the most uh, computer literate, sophisticated group that I've been with. Cause even now I can just see things happen pretty instantaneously. Uh, away from you guys, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I guess I'm in la la land in some ways. And I wish there was a, uh, you know, um, you know, I don't know if there's, you know, additional training on the systems that are here or ways to practice with this or reading, uh, you know, uh, you know, people, I mean, I'm just in other things where we're like, we'll get a little study group and we'll read together or let's get together and read and let's get together and zoom over uh, lunch and talk about the stuff that we're going to be presenting. That would be helpful because, you know, I think that people who've been here, it would be nice in a sense for new folks to be kind of mentored just so we can get comfortable with what we're doing. I, 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 would, I'm, I would say that just take that in consideration. I mean, I survived last term. I don't know how long it gets where you would get proficient in everything. Um, and then also learning about the whole art form, which is pretty fantastic. But I just think I, I, I think I need a little bit, I appreciate a little bit more. Uh, what, what, what was that? Okay. All right. Um, I think that we're all faking it to uh, a greater <laughs> or lesser extent. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that I think that some of us have had more than more time than others to do this. I have yet to sit through an entire grant round from start to finish because I missed the last uh, this last voting, the final voting on on this last round. So I haven't actually seen that part of it in uh, in action. Um, so I think that we're all we're all kind of in this together in that respect, and I don't know what uh, what laws allow for us to be able to have those conversations out of um, out of out of these meeting groups. I would love it if we could get together and kind of have a smaller group meeting so that we can go through like, oh well, this is how I find. It helpful um, to kind of go through things, and I kind of like keep two tally scores, one on my notes and like one in the in the spreadsheet because I I kind of go back and forth referencing them, but somebody else might have a better way. You know, I I don't, Brian. Do you know if that's even legal for us to do? Uh, we can talk about process. Um, and, you know, scheduling and process outside of open meeting. Like we go and we don't talk about specific applicants. Right. We can talk about, we can come up with examples about process and we can do a council wide, you know, um, grants training. Um, if I know nobody, like a lot of people don't have extra time, like I'm one of those people, but the MCC has a lot of tools. They're online. I shared a, a YouTube link um, and it's not only for applicants, but it's also for LCC members. You can watch videos. Um, but I think, you know, to, to also, you know, create more camaraderie and to get to know each other better, we could create, uh, you know, an LCC, like, a, our, like our, our council, can get together and talk about, we can have a meeting and just talk about process of um, what we wanna do with this, you know, and how to click where and things like that. I think, you know, for me, computer training and things like that are more, more beneficial in person. Um, so Jada, if you wanna to come to my office, if you feel comfortable with that, you can come to my office and we can go through computer stuff, bring your laptop, we can, I can help with that if you want to do one-on-one -on -one or if the council, like, you know, a council-wide training as well. So feel free to use me as a resource. Um, again, as long as we're not talking about business, uh, our council business, or talking about specific applicants, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah, too, Ani. Yeah, I, I have some thoughts vis-a-vis uh, -vis the questions that uh, individual council members may have. Uh, it seems to me that if when submitting the scores for the initial overview, we include questions with each application where we have questions, um, and then that is all tallied into the 50% that, uh, that was earlier mentioned, uh, then all of those questions, then we can just forget about the other 50%. And then those questions can be addressed by whoever is responsible for each individual application. And that person would have everyone's questions, some of which may overlap. Lonnie, don't want, you... uh, oh, go, sorry. Uh, Pete mentioned that we're getting close to 9 p.m. Um, I don't know if uh, if we should table this until next meeting um, or we should move further. I just wanted to do it to check in, take everybody, everyone's temperature because we do have to introduce our new members. We did that a little bit already and talk about the next steps for the biennial. So I just wanted to take the temperature of the room right now. I'm fine too. Um, the rest of this discussion. I was just going to suggest, um, you know, I, if people had other questions or have other points about this due process, um, I'd be happy to like 
collect them and then maybe like work through um like a couple of test scenarios with danielle but like okay this is how it works over the course of a month and a half and like try to shoot holes in it and then maybe we come back to the group with like you know our close to ironclad as possible revisions or what have you but and then we can table but just to kind of keep it going do so I'm, am I hearing that we could um, possibly have a vote on adopting a new process that gets revised with Danielle and Eamon and then worked on, and then we can revisit it again and open it back up if not everybody agrees with how it comes out? Yes. Can I, can I have a motion to vote on it, please? Motion to vote. Second. Yes. Okay, all in favor of uh, tabling this vote until Eamon and I. Not tabling. We're voting to do new. I, I, you didn't hear my whatever. That's fine. All right, we're voting to <laughs> change the process. We're voting to change the process as proposed with amendments that Eamon brings based on feedback at the next meeting. Is that correct? Just to recap, I, I second that. If that's it. Yeah. I can't. I can't motion. Dana moved. <laughs> Motion it. to vote on that. <laughs> okay, those in favor. <laughs> it looks like oh, Peter, right. Danielle, Garrett, uh, Eamon, Dana, Jesse, Anna, Tulani, and Pete. Okay, all in favor. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. We will revisit next month. Thank you, Eamon, for project managing the feedback and editing of this process. Please email Eamon your comments. Thank you. Okay. Finally, last but not least, um, welcome Kay and Aliona. Uh, we'll hear more from you next time. We're moving on to the biennial. Um, would anyone else on, on the call who's a council member like to give a little bit of context about last year's biennial, like a quick overview? Anyone who's here for that process? Just so that folks who are new know what, what happened there? I survived it. <laughs> okay, I will do my best to give a quick recap. Oh, Jesse, go ahead. Sure. Um, uh, I'll, I'll try to do it as brief as possible. Um, a week before the biannual was scheduled to go up, is that right? A week or was it a day? I'm blanking on the actual time frame here, but very shortly before the biennial was actually going to be installed, we had a um, meeting where a number of things uh, had come to the fore around um, the process of uh, the actual, um, the biennial process leading up to uh, the, um, the voting, uh, the sorry, the jury um, selection and uh, the jury selecting the pieces. Um, there was a public comment um, by a number of uh, local indigenous artists who said that they were uh, opposed to um, the inclusion of one uh, piece in the uh, biennial which uh, the artist of whom was approached by one of the indigenous artists asking her to uh, remove it prior to installation. Um, and that was uh, turned down. And so there was a call um, by the artists to um, uh, cancel the biennial. Uh, rather than show something that was uh, deemed uh, disrespectful by the indigenous artists that were represented on the uh, public comment. Um, there was a conversation uh, by the Arts Council that uh, referenced a lot of things that had come before, uh, including a number of red flags that we had unintentionally ignored throughout the process leading up to uh, this particular meeting. 
And it um, became clear that there were a number of us who felt that we were, uh, uh, we had not done our job significantly enough to notice those red flags. And rather than move forward with a um, biennial that was uh, harming um, multiple people, um, we would cancel the biennial and um, move forward from there. Um, after which uh, there was a lot of public comment um, beyond the confines of the Arts Council meetings. And we began uh, working on a um, public, uh, public apology. Uh, which was cut short because we did not have enough members to have a full quorum, uh, which is why after December, we had no more meetings until today. <laughs> wow, I didn't know all that. I mean, I knew about it, but wow. Is there a way to see the image, that controversial image, the cancel? Uh, there are a lot of articles written about it. Um, I'm sure a quick Google search can um, can show that, but I would, Thank you. I would vote not to include any demonstrations of any images in this uh, meeting. Thank you, Jesse. So here we are. A new quorum. And uh, one thing to add is that a number of members, I don't know, Jesse, if you said this and I missed it or not, but just a number of uh, members of the previous council resigned um, because of this issue and what it brought up. So here we are, a new crew kind of left to, to speak to this issue, right? Like there's still, as you heard in the public comment, uh, you know, uh, demands from the public and from artists around, you know, what want to know, wanting to know what happened and wanting to have a conversation and wanting to sort of engage more deeply with what came up. And it is it is on this, this group to have a conversation and decide how to proceed. Um, and Ryan and I wanted to provide, oh, I'm sorry, one member resigned um, due to the biennial and another for health reasons. Um, but um, we, it's, it's a complicated issue and it feels like something that we need a lot of time to discuss, not at the end of a nine, 10 meeting. So we thought it might be a good idea to just create a special arts council meeting devoted to that topic, but wanted to run that by the whole group and see what you all thought or how you wanted to address this, how you wanted to proceed. And but I know a special meeting you're talking about, like a special like inv invitation to the public. Here we're going to talk about this issue meeting, or are you talking about like a council focused meeting? A council focused meeting. Um, so like having we set an agenda, we make we do all the things that we would do for a regular public meeting. Could be next Tuesday, could be the Tuesday after at this time, could be our next regularly scheduled meeting where we take over you know, the entire agenda, which probably would be difficult since we have already a full agenda for that meeting to discuss what happens, right? Is it an apology? Is it a public meeting? I don't think we can make that. I don't feel prepared to make that decision at this time. So I think as a group, we should talk about it more. Well, <clears throat> again, uh, this was very clarifying. I think it is a big thing that I talked about. It, it's not an impossible thing to, to work through or, or to, to get to it. I just think, you know, you're, we're looking at the time and stuff. But I really felt, I actually want to thank people to bring it up the way you presented it. It made some sense because I got bits and pieces of something that I wasn't sure. So, and I do appreciate that people want to, you know, to revisit and to, to learn from this. I think it's a healthy thing that we, talk about that. I, I'm just feeling a lot of stuff with that because I remember bits and pieces of it and I was confused. And, and that's and maybe that's why when I say, well, what does indigenous mean? I mean, maybe that's where that's coming from because 
it was a it was a it was a big thing uh i heard people talking about it and i wasn't part of it and i was just like what and now hearing about it and then people upset that something was canceled i remember all of that stuff and you know so much so and and, and i'm here but i think that it would be helpful for folks maybe healing Thanks, Ryan. I just wanted to have a passive hand raise so other people could say things that they wanted to without me butting in again. Um, does anybody else have anything that they want to say before I put in my two cents? Well, it seems to me that we ought to have that meeting and schedule it this evening. Not schedule to have the meeting this evening, but schedule a meeting in the future today. just to clarify this would be a regular arts council meeting with public comment anyone could attend and watch participate in public comment um agendas would go up in advance it would be a regular standard arts council meeting devoted only to this issue just to clarify i'm also in favor of the an additional special meeting so that we have the full time to dedicate to this conversation and um, then our regular time to do all the other work that we have to do. I think it's merited and I think it will keep us on target and also give the appropriate space that really is needed to include everybody and figure out the next steps there. Um, Danielle, I wonder um, if, well, one, I don't think one meeting is going to bring everybody up to, up to, up to date. Um, and, you know, this whole process of what we started engaging in, in terms of a public apology, uh, we knew that walking into that, it was going to be multiple meetings. And we had two meetings that were open to the public uh, for, specifically for public comment for us to listen to what the public had to say. Um, and we got to the point of beginning to process everything, but we never had another meeting beyond that to really take all of those questions and considerations into the actual apology that we were working on at the time. Um, part of me wonders if we should do something that is just a private arts council to continue processing the public comments that have already been said before we and continue working on the public apology before we get to a point where we reintroduce more public comment um, and i think that public comment should happen after we release the public apology um, but again, I'm, you know, really opening um, a possible can of worms here, but want to respect the process that we had begun, uh, you know, in November internally. So Jesse, I just want to respond to that question. I had a number of conversations with um, the city attorney. We are not allowed to have private meetings. If we're writing a public apology or processing all of it needs to happen at a standard arts council meeting that starts with an open or starts or ends with an open comment. We can a public comment. We can put public comment wherever in the meeting agenda makes sense. We can do one at the beginning and one at the end, um, or just at the end. <clears throat> um, but the processing, all all of it, is subject to open meeting law, according to my conversations with Alan. Um, so. I, I, I just wanted to share that. Okay, did you did you want to chime in? Um, yeah, I just wanted to add something in the interest of of transparency. Um, so I am um, I'm not sure this will be relevant because I'm not sure if I'll be a council member by the time this meeting comes around. But if I am, uh, when it does, I wanted to disclose that um, the artist who created the uh, the work that was at the center of the controversy is a dues paying member of the organization that I work for. 
So I am happy to attend the meeting, but I would probably be abstaining from any votes. And if um, if it, the council prefers that I recuse myself, um, let me know and I'm, I'm willing to do that as well. Thank you, Kai. So I think we we have arrived at consensus that a, a meeting devoted just to this subject would be helpful. Um, would anyone like to, I don't know if we need to move to do that. I think we can just do that. <laughs> um, and maybe we can talk about scheduling, Brian. I don't know if it's something that we wanna do over email or since we have a good majority of folks here now, we wanna to try to set that meeting time. Okay, so Brian will send a doodle tomorrow. Um, everyone can check their calendar. It'll be great because Pete is not on the call. We will schedule a regular Arts Council meeting that is outside of our monthly meetings. So there might be two this coming month um, where we um, just focus on this. And we can't discuss this by email, but I will say usually I work with Brian one-on-one -on, -one on setting the agenda for those meetings. So I will give a lot of, of thought and attention to like structure, but if you have suggestions or ideas or comments that you haven't voiced in this session, you can either please add them now, or if you would like to send like an email just to how, how the agenda looks with your suggestions, please feel free to email me or Brian with your ideas and suggestions about what that structure of that meeting should look like. Aliana? I guess uh, my question is, what's the best way to get prepared for that meeting? And I know Jesse suggested Googling things, but also I'm now a little afraid of Googling too much to get, uh, just uh, is there a sort of information that you can provide that will prepare me uh, for the meeting? The person that have no idea what happened and has no like. Yeah, like Brian and I will work on either putting together like some of the articles that have come around. Um, I think it's a little bit, um tough because i want to make sure that like what this this the the story you hear is is like accurate so i would say probably the best thing would be to actually send you the links to the meetings all of the meetings are recorded so there are a couple of meetings that happened where where these conversations were had and i would say sending you the meeting links is probably the best um uh, way forward and we have Brian is showing how to access it on our YouTube channel now but we can email those out um to to all to everyone just in case people need a refresher um you can watch them you can watch them on like point uh five or or two x speed so that with captions so you're not doing hours you know if you want to um speed it up and there are many 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 news articles so um you know we can send you some or you can track them down. But I'll say like the news articles, some of them are written from, you know, some perspectives, some of them are from others. So you kind of have to read both sides to get a sense of what was going on. But um, there was a lot of a lot of coverage. And we'll work on getting you some some content on that. Thank you. I'm seeing all the YouTube links. I think that's a great way place to start. Appreciate it. I would I would say I would really recommend if folks aren't familiar or want to refresh or start there because you'll hear and see directly from the council members who voted you'll hear and see directly from the artists and not like the editorial version which like even jesse at the beginning there was an editorial there if you talk to me i would have an editorial right we're trying our best to present an accurate picture for you um so i would say going to the meeting minutes and the meeting recording is going to be the best way forward tulani yeah um just for the for the sake of time I'm also thinking, is it is it okay if you weren't part of the council at that time to like do the research and then bring questions forward prior to the meeting, just because otherwise I feel like we could be having duplicate conversations and multiple meetings around this, like just doing catch up because it's such a magnitude of a conversation. I think, I think at least everyone coming with a couple of questions knowing that this is it's going to be touchy it's going to have a lot of feelings knowing that all of that is going to be aware um and being fully prepared for that meeting just because 
I think also knowing or even having an idea of what people want as the outcome besides alongside the public um, the public apology. I think having that in mind for us as board members will be really helpful to just streamline at least I'm I I'm envisioning at least two meetings. Yeah, thank you, Tulani. So when Brian sends out the doodle, we'll set our meeting date. And then um, I would say like, once we have our meeting date, maybe two weeks prior to that, we can ask for questions. And either those questions, if they're, if they're the kind of questions we can answer by email with like facts and documents, we will. If they require discussion, then Brian and I will figure out whether they get answered at the top of the meeting or if there's like another way to communicate those answers to everyone so that we are all starting from a, as close to a similar starting point as we can. So there's a comment about um, how the meetings won't actually capture what people wrote. I, I will just point out that um, some of the jurors who participated in the process, some of the artists who participated in the process, who had uh, you know, feedback, all of their comments were read during public comment at the meetings that followed the vote. So, I mean, Dana read aloud like a note from one of the jurors in response to the process. So those, a lot of that feedback will be incorporated in the meetings, in the uh, meeting recordings, any additional feedback is was that was submitted as public comment if something so I'm like responding to public comment in the chat right now which I'm probably not supposed to do but if there was something submit to the arts council as public comment it was read at the meeting or it is in our records as public comment so that is all part of a meeting file um like newspaper articles and Facebook posts are not public comment for us but if someone wrote something to the council, it was shared as public comment, just to be really clear. Um, okay, so I think this might be a good place to end unless anyone has any other final thoughts or comments. No, we're way over time. Okay, so thanks everyone for being here. It was so lovely to connect with our new council. Hopefully we'll get to see each other in person soon. Keep an eye out for Brian's doodle poll about our special meeting. And um, once we set the agenda for that, we'll send a calendar invite. It'll go on the city website and um, we'll, we'll get into some of the meat of that content. Until then, we'll, we'll see you at all of our arts events in town and, and on Zoom. So thanks everyone. Thank you.